Hello folks, it is BatTube here, and today I've got three rigid batteries here, uh, power tool batteries, the rigid 18 to 20 volt uh, batteries, lithium ion. I've got three of them here with two separate problems. Uh, these two share the same problem, and this one I believe is just dead. Uh, these cells are probably at zero volts. As you can see, the lights don't turn on whatsoever when you push the button. Uh, it doesn't work on a charger, none of that. The issue with these ones is different. Shows full bars on both of them. And mind you, both of these were found scrapped. This one was basically brand new, if not brand new, never used. Uh, the only couple sliding marks that are on it are probably from me testing it, and probably the person that uh, first tested it and found out it didn't work. Okay, so we're going to figure out the issue here. Uh, like I said, these two are basically the same. As you can see, uh, it says full bars when you put it in any power tool, rigid power tool and you try and use it, it doesn't work and when you press the button and you press the trigger it it shuts off the lights and you cannot turn them on so some sort of short or something uh, causing it not to work and the same thing happens with this battery so we're going to try and figure that out to start this project you're going to need a Torx T10 to take out these screws and after you got that, we can continue. So on these larger batteries, the middle size batteries, it's the same as the small batteries. These screws are on the side. When you get into some of the larger rigid batteries, these screws are on the top, which I will show you. So in your case, you may have a battery with no screws on the side. In this case, it's a hyper octane Bluetooth 9 amp hour, no screws on the side whatsoever, none on the bottom but you will find two right here. Uh, there's some cap plugs in these two spots that I've already removed, and these four screws disassemble this battery. So if you have this type of battery, that's how you disassemble it. So I'm gonna start just by disassembling all of the batteries. So I will just take out, out these screws. So yeah, it's not focusing on anything else. And then we will get to disassembling the rest of them. Okay folks, I got all the screws out. Uh, hopefully I corrected the brightness in editing, but you may notice a difference there. Uh, I was actually setting the brightness on a, on a dim phone screen, so it was not accurate. Instead it was actually super bright, so I apologize if it was super bright. Okay, so we're going to open up these three. Okay. So if you know, these two share the same problem, and this one shares a different problem. I would say just completely remove it so we can uh, check the voltage of the cells individually, but first let's check the pack voltage in total. So to check the pack voltage, you will see two big solder blocks right here and right here. And these are your two uh, main lines. It doesn't matter which probe you put on it, it's either going to show you a negative reading or a positive reading. So as you can see, uh, 0.18 volts for the whole pack, which is horrible. So yeah, that pack is apparently dead. So the cells in this are completely dead, and we're not going to save them. Uh, that part I already knew, but I wanted to show you guys how I would measure that. So. The only thing good in this basically is the board, hopefully. That's assuming the board's not bad and that's what killed the cells. So assuming this board is good, uh, we know that we have a good board, bad cells. Let's move on to the next one. This is somewhat obvious, but not so much. Uh, it's very easy just to put the blame on all of this corrosion because there's a lot of corrosion. So it could very well just be all of this corrosion on the battery that is causing it not to work. Uh, shorted, it probably shorted out one of these tiny, tiny little resistors if we zoom in on this a little bit. As you can see, there's a bunch of tiny, tiny resistors uh, which could easily 
be getting destroyed by some of that corrosion. So that's probably why we have an issue with this battery. We can try cleaning this up uh, with some rubbing alcohol, uh, inspecting it further, see if we see any actual chips or resistors or something that do look actually damaged. If we do find some that are damaged, we will attempt to replace them. As you can see, there's some there that don't look too good. And we will see if that works. But first off is going to be cleaning this board of all of this corrosion. All right, folks, so these are the two boards that I want to clean. Now I'm going to be using rubbing alcohol. The only thing I would suggest you use, and I'm not even suggesting this because there is still some kind of debate about this uh, using 99% uh, rubbing alcohol or 100% rubbing alcohol to clean electronics when they're still powered. Isopropyl alcohol is non-conductive but there may potentially be water in your solution and not all solutions are actually 99.99% alcohol. Some of them just lie. Obviously this is this is common practice. It's nothing new so I'm not going to recommend you clean these boards with any sort of anything while there is still power going through them. So in that case, I'm going to show you guys the process to remove the board if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be uh, scrubbing this down with a toothbrush, some 99% rubbing alcohol. I've done it many times in the past, never had issues. I just don't want to be responsible for the one issue that may happen to you for some reason. So first of all, here's what we're going to do. we got to get this battery out of this shell. Uh, but it's not really a shell. If you just look on the side, these two side pieces will now come off, revealing that there is a lot of dirt and dust in there. Uh, revealing a little bit more than that, there's some schmoo in there. That is the high temperature uh, disconnect, uh, high temperature thermal probe right there. On the opposite side, as you can see, some corrosion, some corrosion. So this battery was either under some water or something, something to get all of this powder. It looks like drywall dust or something, potentially drywall dust. So I'm going to give this... Uh, the sides a wipe down with alcohol because I don't have to worry about those shorting I'm going to stay in these groups here so I'm not crossing any groups just be careful on the positive terminals make sure you're using something damp that's not putting liquid anywhere underneath that Alright, so the process of removing this, separating this motherboard, oh, sorry, from the cells goes like this. As you can see, there is balance lines coming from the cells, each parallel group, and series, each parallel, two parallel groups in series has two terminals that's going to be soldered on either side. This is the main, main positive right here. So all of these are going to have to be unsoldered and removed. So unsoldered, uh, pulled up, there's four screws, uh, five screws, six screws rather, to remove plus the solder joints. There's one here, there is one here. There is the main one here. There is another one here. There's another one here. And there's another main one right here. Now, as for the thermal probe, all you have to do is stuck on there. You just gotta peel it off, just like so. And that is how you will separate the pack. But if you're going to go the daredevil route, so using your 99.99% isopropyl alcohol, you're gonna start scrubbing. See, as you can see, you see how those lights turned on? Now, that's actually an indication of conductivity in the alcohol that I'm using. As you can tell, judging by what that is, that could have been from me brushing, physically brushing up against a resistor or something, but judging by the fact the lights are staying on, I believe there is some water in this alcohol. 
All right, so we've got that scrubbed down a little bit. So let's see if that solved the issue. All right, so I've got the pack after I just scrubbed it with the isopropyl alcohol, which I believe is contaminated with water. It did come from the dollar store. Well, um, I can tell you one thing, this drill didn't work before. I mean, this battery didn't work before. And now it does. So, whatever I did to clean the corrosion off or whatever, or uh, repositioned a resistor that may have been budged, it seemed to do the trick. So, yeah, that battery's good. So I'm gonna be cleaning out all the plastics for that battery and reassembling that one like so calling it complete. All right, so this board, I'm not just gonna go scrubbing away because I actually kinda worried. Uh, I don't want the same thing to happen with this. This is a brand new one. And we're just gonna test this drill again, this battery again. Still doesn't work. Doesn't work. Okay, so what we can do is I'm going to take a dry brush with nothing on it and wipe yes you see how we had that come on and wipe these resistors right here that are in question these right here were the resistors in question you can see how much cleaner they look compared to when we looked at them earlier with that schmoo on it it's a large difference Everything seems to look okay. Other than these, I kind of look blown. Kind of look like they blew out the top. Okay, so this right here has been burnt, as well as this, as you can see, the holes in the top from it burning out, as well as potentially that one. And these other ones look fine for the most part, potentially that one. But after scrubbing over them, we did see lights come on over in this vicinity. These indicator lights came on while we were scrubbing down here. So that's a bit of an indicator that we did something. Bring over the drill. Well then, looks like, uh, looks like we got it. Okay, so keep in mind, folks, that that part has been blown out. So this is a temporary fix. This could last an hour. This could last a minute. This may be the next time you try and use it. doesn't work at all. But for now, this is what's going to work for me. I just cleaned up the boards, the corrosion, and just like that, we saved ourselves two batteries. Okay, so we're going to see if it's viable to rejuvenate these cells. I'm just going to check the voltage across a single channel because it was super, super low across the whole battery. And so I'm assuming these batteries are not even worth attempting to rejuvenate. 0 0.2 volts. 0, 0.0. Yeah, okay. This is dead. These cells are dead. So in order to correct this battery, you would have to replace it with brand new cells. And you can do that. You can go with any size cells you want. You are not limited to the capacity of these cells. You can go with any capacity cells you want. Just make sure the current rating matches the current rating of these. Minimum. Just because they use these specific cells for a reason. So at least use the same amp rating as these cells here. Amp output rating and you can use any capacity rating cells. Stay tuned in a future video where we are going to use some brand new cells and go ahead and do that. Bring life to this dead battery pack which has a good board which we can easily fix with a couple dollars and 18650s. Okay folks, so all we have to do now since that one is donezo, we cannot repair it other than doing a full-on cell change so that'll be in a future video all we have to do is come over to these batteries once again I'm just gonna confirm once again test make sure that they both work before we put them back together as it's had some time to fully dry out completely and maybe things have changed which I doubt but it's always good to check 
because it sucks to have to take this stuff apart a second time or a third time depending on how many times you've taken it apart so there's parts from earlier we're going to start with these side pieces and it's the same as when you took them off they can only go one way it may take a minute to figure out the direction that it goes but can only can only go on one of two sides right so there's only two options you can press the sides together and that's good you can go ahead and put this on top and you're good to go now all you have to do is put the eight screws in and this pack is ready to go. We have corrected the issue. We've cleaned it up. Should be all Gucci. Okay, so I'm going to put these two batteries back together. And they're good to go. It was a very simple repair. Not all of the repairs are going to be that simple. Both of these batteries had the same problem. So if I come across some other tool batteries, other similar rigids, or some other brands like DeWalt, Makita, any of the other ones, Milwaukee, that have issues, we will go over them and try and fix them and try and determine what's wrong with them. Okay guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.